Wow, the late 90s and early 2000s was great. Look at this. Got him. Hey, Lucky, how's your website coming along? Yeah, it's looking pretty good, my dude. Story-driven games were always really hard for me to get into. The gameplay can be dull, and it might take hours just to get into the good part. God forbid it can be a visual novel, too. No knock on VNs like Planet or Doki Doki Literature Club, but I just can't see myself sitting there for hours, clicking on little choices, and reading the dialogue between two characters. Games like Yakuza fall into a different category for me, even though they're text-heavy and story-driven. The difference is the payoff to me. Yakuza's written like your local TV network soap opera where there's always little bombshells and plot twists littered around the story. Couple that with the fact that you can beat people's faces in. It makes for a very hype and exciting story without you having to dread hours of cutscenes and text. But what if I told you that they made an enjoyable game that's actually predominantly reading based? The game I'm talking about? Hypnospace Outlaw. Hypnospace Outlaw is the product of a successful Kickstarter campaign by Jay Tholen. Jay went on to create the development studio of this game, Tendershoot, and it's available on everything except Windows 95 and Windows XP, which you would kind of expect from an operating system simulator from the 90s. What sounds more interesting to you, pressing A through a dialog box, or browsing a 90s internet web page with cool clip art? Instead of getting to know someone based on their dialogue and actions, you get to know someone based on how they make their website. As a hypnospace enforcer, it is your duty to moderate people's websites and see if they have any copyright infringement, illegal services, or any sort of harassment or bullying. For every strike you give, you receive hypno coins, and with hypno coins you can purchase backgrounds, music, virtual pets, clip art, anything you kind of want. But what exactly is hypnospace other than uh, looking a little outdated? Hypnospace is the groundbreaking way of accessing something like the internet while you sleep. So users can actually create websites, talk to each other, and whatever. As they sleep, they just put on this little headband thing and uh, away you go playing some RuneScape as you take a nap. Hypnospace Outlaw, unfortunately, is one of those games you kind of have to experience the story for yourself, so I won't actually be covering much of the story elements in the game. What I will cover instead, though, Look at this dang pizza dancing, that's freaking hilarious. What the heck is that? Counselor Ronnie reporting for duty. For duty. Duty. Drugs make. Yeah, so this game is actually very quirky and has a lot of spunk, and I really appreciate that. The sheer variety of websites also keeps the game very interesting, from a church's ministry website to Zane Rocks 14 who is very into metal and hating on people. The aesthetic is amazing with the early internet culture vibe they're going for. Web pages are littered with cheesy gifs, clashing text, and crazy colors. It's very reminiscent to early MySpace where you could have added how many pictures you wanted or changed the layout or whatever background you'd like. The websites might be the focal point of this game, but you technically get a whole desktop. You can use this space to view images, play some music, watch some videos, and even download some video games. Just be careful where you download from because you could actually get a virus as well. This game is actually very good at making you feel connected. It almost feels like you're actually living in this world. Countless amounts of times I found myself just browsing the web instead of doing the main goal of the game. As stated earlier, your main goal is to basically censor people. You don't want them to be spreading viruses or harassing someone else or doing any sort of copyright infringement. Once a user receives a certain amount of strikes, you can actually decide to ban them and remove them from Hypnospace completely. At first I didn't want to ban anyone actually, but as time went on, you could actually change the story outcome to a degree based on who you ban. There's multiple ways to tackle certain situations as well. For instance, you might be told to take a look at someone's website to see if they're bullying someone. Now your first thought is to probably go straight to that person's website and see what they wrote on their webpage. However though, this game actually has some puzzle elements, so it's not as easy as just going straight to that person's website. You might have to visit other people's websites to see what they have to say about that person, or use the search function to search for keywords. This sort of gameplay works really well for a game based around the internet because you'll end up just browsing the web and finding crazy things. 
This is almost like a real life simulator when you get home and want to use the computer for productivity reasons but end up looking at the same three web pages for hours and hours. The difference here is it's an alternate reality which keeps it very interesting. Part of this immersiveness includes made up artists that don't actually exist. However, they do in the hypnospace world. Characters like Freezer or Chowderman, and bands like Seepage. Each of these artists have their own kind of music, whether it be pop or metal. And all of it is actually really good, to be honest. The soundtrack's pretty great. The music oozes a lot of personality, but still remains faithful to that time period. The music is key here because you can learn a lot about a person's personality based on what kind of music they play on their website. It really sets the mood when you go to an edgy teenager's website that plays metal music versus a southerner's website that plays country music. The immersion doesn't stop there either because the game actually progresses in time and after a few days a website can actually change and have different interactions between different characters just like in real life. I also really love the little things they did for this game like moving your mouse will actually make the pages load faster. Also the fact that they made their own slang acronyms such as BWL which is basically the equivalent of LOL in internet speak. This game made me feel so connected that I often forgot that these weren't real people. This game isn't afraid to make their own twist to this early internet landscape too since users are technically sleeping as they access hypnospace everything feels surreal as well. Going back to the gameplay however, sometimes the puzzles can be extremely hard. The payoff feels really good though when you find a hidden website or crack a password, but sometimes I found myself looking for clues for hours. I even accidentally sequence broke the game toward the end because I found a hidden page too early just by me trying to look for shady things. Unfortunately because of that I had to look up some answers online because I missed some key components in the game. I would advise against looking at online walkthroughs because there are only a handful of puzzles in this game and they all require you to dig and problem solve. You could probably beat the game in a couple hours if you already knew all the answers. However, going in blind for the most part lets you squeeze in a lot of time just looking at the different websites and get entertainment by tangent things which is one of the biggest appeals of this game. Playing without a walkthrough will clock you in at least 10 hours of playtime. I could wholeheartedly recommend Hypnospace Outlaw to anyone. You can't really compare it to any other game as it's a pretty unique concept though. The dreamy early internet aesthetic, the storytelling, clever puzzles, the humor and the music are all enough to keep you engaged and satisfied throughout your whole experience. It's a wonderful indie game that deserves more attention so I hope you could at least give it a closer look. Oh,